So when you reached out, I, um, me and my best friend, we were praying and we were so hurt when I just, when you've reached out, it was like God reaching out. And I'm not trying to glorify the whole thing because I know you are his messenger. You are his hands and feet. As far as I know, God wants us to pray for the lost until he comes back. So it was really, you were my hope. It was like God threw you. Oh my God, I'm not a leader. I can't lead people. All I know is just how to pray. So I'm so grateful because to many people, I may not be anything, but if God wants me to just pray, I'm just going to pray. I just want to say thank you because a lot of people have the Holy Spirit, but do they always obey him? I don't know about that, but I felt like your obedience helped me to not give up. So that was my encouragement because, because of you, because of just one act of small obedience to come and pray. Just come and pray. Just come and pray. That's all I was looking for. I didn't want people to come and stop what they were doing, but just someone to encourage me to pray. It starts with you. Don't wait for others. No, just you come and pray, Samara. It has encouraged me to stand firm and keep praying and keep believing because that's all I got to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. I thank God because Apostle you are an amazing leader. You are led by the Holy Spirit. I have I've been following you. I've gone to the church. I am and I've learned to revamp my life, which go to bed early, wake up early. And in my home, it's all praise and worship. I hardly even turn on the TV anymore because I'm too busy praying and worshiping. And I'm excited because you guys have a new family. I didn't know it was so big. She she always talk, talks about us as being such a big group. And wow, this is amazing. God bless all of you. Um, my, my twin sister, she was my pastor and my prayer partner, and she passed away um, this July um, through cancer. So we were like just contending for that and praying. Um, she was an intercessor in the ministry in Guatemala that is for deliverance and intercession. So I had decided actually to leave Japan and go back home. And that's kind of when you cut me. I was really praying for God's purpose. Um, my daughter still lives in, in the United States. So I went back to stay with her. And I was just really talking to my husband like this has been hard. I'm not coming back. And I talked to my pastor and he said, well, let's pray about it. And I'm like, yes, let's pray about it. And I was pretty sure. And the next morning is when you contacted me about wow. being the prayer hub representative here in Japan. And I had been praying to join the movement for three years. And God told me to not reach out, but that when it was the time, somebody would reach out to me. So when you reached out, it was like the light at the end of the tunnel and it really gave me purpose and hope to come back um and I got really excited and it was really what I needed because I was just kind of lost without my prayer partner I love to pray and uh in this short period of time we've also seen our parliament really rising and fighting corruption yeah but besides that, um, I'm growing stronger. I'm getting better. I really love the Lord. I love the morning de devotionals. I'm getting built up. So I'm so, so glad to be here because about maybe about almost 15 years ago, the Lord used to tell me, you'll be praying with the best of the best of the intercessors. And all that time, I just thought Uganda. So whenever I'd be praying on my own, I, was one, I used to wonder, which intercessors in Uganda am I going to meet up with and pray together with? Never did I ever think that I would link up with global intercessors. So I really bless the Lord for this opportunity to get to know you and to get to know everybody in the prayer house. God bless. You hear this so often, I am sure, but when you get on your morning prayer call and you say, give us a year of your life and you'll change, you'll be a change. I'm like, holy smokes, I had no idea. I'm um, like some of the other ladies here that have spoken. Um, I'm like, I think seven, eight months into uh, my journey um, following you and starting with that um, and what God is doing in my life. I mean, I think I could write a book, like a 300 page book already, it feels like. Um, but anyways, it's pretty exciting. But I started um, 
the Lord kind of took me out of a, a pit at the end of July. And uh, I've, I discovered you and who you are by a book that a friend had. It was your prophet's uh, devotional. And I remember picking it up and looking at it and kind of glancing. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing. This is me. This is real stuff. And I'm like, I know this is so beyond me and I'm so no near this. And, and this is not who, I mean, I, I don't even understand what I'm reading, but I ordered the book. And, uh, and I just haven't stopped from that point forward. I have two price reports. The first one, uh, trafficking. Here is very difficult that the country makes some moves on that. And we have two apprehensions. Last week, one of them was from the prison. They were trafficking the prisoners. So it was a sexual trafficking. So it was big. There is a small people, like five or six people, maybe that were arrested, but it's a miracle that that happened. So thank you, Jesus, for the prayers. And I want to thank you for helping me navigate where nobody else would help me navigate. Nobody else would say um, the things that you say. You don't understand how important it's been because I'm I'll be 53 in August. And I've been searching, trying to figure out why do I always feel so lost? Why do I always feel so confused? And I can say the last few months, I'm finally beginning to see a straight path. So I thank you for that. And even with the warfare that has been going on, I'm able to stand up and be stronger now. And yes, I'm a crybaby. And um, thank you for just, you know, your words are, are more powerful and they're very, even when you're like being direct and, and quote unquote strict, it's no malice in your voice. It's no malice in your heart. And that's what soothes me because I've been torn down so much. So I can take correction just as long as it's given in the right way. And so I just want to thank you for helping me and my family. And when I say me and my family, you all have prayed my mother the last four months. My mother had pneumonia four times. Two times they said she was going to die. And I stood straight up in the hospital and told them, my God says she will live and not die. She is a child of God. She walks by faith and not by sight. We will mount up on eagles. And I preached to the to the whole people. And literally, they let my mother go out the hospital because they were like, we can't find anything wrong with this woman. Let her go. <laughs> so I thank you for making me bold. Thank you. So, so my dream is starting to come true now. There is no need to use words when, when we are filled, filled with Christ. When that fragrance just, just surround us. And, and it's just amazing and, and how good our father is. He's, he's really, really amazing. And I know that this is just the starting point. Amen. Wow, look at you. Look at you go. And I know you have such a heart for the lost and the harvest. And you know what? I read an article that people in Finland are the happiest people in the world. Did you see that article? And look at you. You're all smiling and happy. I'm going to move to Finland and be your neighbor. Uh, something just uh, like for three years, I was uh, waiting and I was uh, I wasn't sure if I, I should do uh, uh, the prayer hub. And I was I was praying and I was at home with kids and I was like, it's it's crazy. I cannot do, do the <laughs> leader. I cannot be a leader uh, when I I have uh, two little kids and um, then uh, something uh, in January it was just uh, I think God was working in me and I uh, it was like a shift inside and I said yes I will do it even though it's it's crazy <laughs> and then I uh, after I did this um, that I felt such peace inside that I'm in God's will and that says this is what I should do I just found myself after after school I just found myself getting into a bookshop and I'm not the kind of person who will take money and want to go into a bookshop to buy books because first of all I'm very lazy at reading books I'm very bad at it so 
I just found myself getting into a bookshop and I stumbled on a book uh, by Kenneth Hagin on how to be how to be led by the spirit of God. And I found when I just found it, I decided to check out for another book. Then on going through, I fell on the book. That's when I fell on the making of a prophet. And holding the book in my hand, I, I looked at the author, Jennifer Leclerc. It was, I had never been familiarized with the name before, never seen a book, never had a name before. And I was like, but what could this book probably teach me? Actually, I just took the book in, paid for it, went back home. And then I found myself reading The Making of a Prophet. And at that point in time, I was going through some challenges with regards to myself and the, the person to whom I submitted to as my spiritual father. And what caught my attention in The Making of the Prophet was the example Apostle used when she made mention of her church being being a David a David submitting to Saul. So when I found this, it was so practical and was so easy for me to blend in, and that was when I was like, "Oof!" For some time, I read I read over the fifteen chapters, the same day I bought the book. I just became addicted to it and. After that, I closed the book, went to the website, went to the entire website, every link in and out hyperlink, I clicked on everything, going through everything. And what baffled me was everything now on the website. Now looking at the, the region I come from, it's not easy to finance. Financially, is it demands a lot for someone like me personally, because I am an undergraduate student and family doesn't really back. And I find myself having to do this thing alone. It is the hunger and the desperate nature which I have for God. As in, I am, I am that one person that anywhere I find myself, I have just one thing in mind, making a difference. So I had this obsession about knowing God, not knowing how to read the Bible, not knowing how to pray more than doing all those things. I just wanted to know God, being able to be in a place and seeing something and knowing that this is God and this is in him. That was my drive. And so when I came across Jen, uh, Apostle Jennifer, I I was like, okay, the first, aside uh, uh, Catherine Kuhlman, okay, the first person I'm actually having to meet live who I can connect with, I was like, okay, let's see how it goes. In 2007, the Holy Spirit woke me up in the middle of the night and told me he would bring a third great awakening to the nation. I believe we're going to see the greatest great awakening in the history of the world and it will spill over into the nations of the earth for the glory of God. I believe we'll see a movement greater than all previous moves of God put together. And I know it's predicated on prayer. The Awakening Prayer Hub's mission in any city is to draw a diverse group of intercessors who have one thing in common, to contend for the Lord's will in its city, state, and nation. Bishop Bill Hammond, Lou Engel, Cindy Jacobs, Mike Bickle, James Gall, Alveda King, and many others are standing with us. Will you start a hub or find a hub in your city at awakeningprayerhubs.com?